Thank you everyone for joining us today for our webinar, Right on Time, Get the Most Out of Microly's Timesheet Module. My name is Lauren Hogan, and I'm a Regional Marketing Coordinator here at JMT. And we're very excited to have one of our own, Dan Wharton, joining us today, and Cherry Carlock from Microy. Just a couple of housekeeping notes before I turn it over to Dan and Cherry. If you have any questions during the webinar today, please go ahead and submit them into the Q&A section as you think of them. We'll save them all until the end of the presentation, but don't hesitate to submit them as they come. Also, just a reminder that we'll send you both some handouts and the recording of today's webinar within 24 hours after it has concluded. And with that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you, Dan, to get us started. Awesome, Lauren, thank you. Uh, can you see my screen? Uh, how do I sound? Sounds great and looks great. Cool, awesome, thank you very much. All right, welcome everyone to part three of our four part series with Microy. Let's start by talking about why you're here. For most nonprofit organizations, timesheets are a crucial part of the budgeting process and reconciling them with the financial system can be time consuming and error prone. For MIP accounting users, it doesn't have to be. Microy's timesheet module seamlessly integrates, seamlessly integrates with MIP and allows and enables to easily record, track, and approve timesheet data. In this session, we're gonna uncover multiple key features the actual integration with MIP, the customizable workflows and approval processes, how labor distribution can be pre-programmed and set on autopilot, and the various interfaces your employees can use to enter time and labor. All right, first quick round of introductions. My name is Dan Wharton, and joining me is Cherry Carlock. Cherry is the head of business development and so often works with me on customer calls, resolutions, questions, sharing of best practices and customer success stories. Cherry, say hi real quick, please. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Awesome, thank you. All right, we're gonna dig deep into the two companies. Uh, that's where we're gonna start. We'll get, and then we'll finally get onto the good stuff, the micro timesheet module. Um, why would JMT recommend micro over MIP? when it comes to timesheet entry. Remember that MIP does have a timekeeping piece. It's called the Employee Web Service. It's part of their HRMS solution. The short answer is Micro has a more robust feature set. Micro offers pre-configured hardware to collect badge or fingerprint readings. These are uh, biometric terminals. Um, and they work in conjunction with the software. Um, unlike MIP's EWS module, again, that employee web service module, Micro Timesheets does not require a connection uh, to the HR management piece. And employees, you can use a, a web interface even if MIP isn't hosted in the cloud. So those are a couple knowledge nuggets. Hopefully I've captured your interest and you're eager to see more. It should take us about 45-ish minutes to deliver uh, today's content. And at the end, we'll open things up for Q&A with the audience, okay? All right, uh, I want to start off buff by speaking correctly. Sorry, I want to start by thanking everyone for taking the time to meet with us today. My name is Dan Wharton. I'm a customer account manager. I work with hundreds of nonprofits across the country and assist them with their day to day. What does that mean? Well, you may have a new employee that needs a, a warm welcome, shown where to go for answers. Uh, really, how can we teach them how to fish? Uh, how can they be self sufficient? Or they need to connect with all the free resources that are available. Uh, you may want to import data from another system or eliminate manual processes. Maybe you want to know about MIP Cloud and its benefits. Uh, some other use cases or, or things that, um, that we talk about on a daily basis, uh, expanding account codes, grant codes, uh, uh, creating new segments, creating a new business entity, merging two entities adding users, removing users, auditing your maintenance and support, um, uh, things that have been coming up a lot recently, changing your fiscal year, uh, how to automate AP, the list really goes on forever. Um, customers are always looking for resources, free resources, uh, tips, tricks, and how they can better leverage MIP. How can you get the most out of your investment? I can be that person you call to ask for help. I can make your life easier. That's what being an account manager at JNT is all about. What else do we do here? JMT is the largest MIP reseller, not just in volume, but in size. 
we have regional offices in Austin, Nashville, Patterson, New York, and staff everywhere in between. We invited Mike Ray to talk about our timesheet solution, but the truth is MIP customers have several options. Over the years, about 30 years total, we've observed and learned that there's no such thing as a one-size-fits-all solution. JMT has vetted hundreds of vendors to bring you best-in-class solutions for payroll, financial planning and analysis, cemetery management, AP automation, document management, and more. The mantra is simple. Everything we do will lead to better processes and greater efficiency. Uh, take a look at some logos. Here's a handful of many of the nonprofits we served over the year, literally thousands, literally. Uh, take a look and see if there are any names that jump out at you. Some of them, um, some of these organizations are, are very small uh, foundations, uh, one one person shops, so to speak. Um, some are large, uh, uh, much much larger. Some have national offices or hundreds of millions in annual spending budget. JMT is small enough to deliver a personalized experience, but big enough to handle a large scale project. How do we do it? Well. Uh, we have a really great team of professionals. So take a look at some of these pictures. Now, I'm in sales, so I get to travel and meet a lot of our customers, but a lot of the folks you see pictured here tend to operate behind the scenes. And for those who don't know or are new to JMT, I'll point a few out. Uh, the gentleman in the tie is Dennis. Uh, he's a magician when it comes to uh, financial data and making systems talk to MIP. We talk a little bit about importing data from a uh, a, a third-party system a little bit earlier. That's something that we talk about day in and day out with our customers. Carol, uh, our chief experience officer, has an incredible way of working with customers and helping them realize their potential. Many customers have met Dougie, pink collar, uh, when they first implemented MIP. Um, over the years, uh, she's been on site for training engagements. She's now head of training here at JMT. Lucy in the middle, um, she's actually, well, like many others, started off as a, as a customer and then joined JMT as a, as a consultant. Anyway, I just wanted to, I wanted to kind of highlight some of the names and faces. Um, it's nice to be able to associate names with faces. So they all do great work and we all have one common goal, create a great customer experience. I call this the uh, what's in it for you slide. This is about where we talk, uh, this is where we talk about customers and uh, their experiences with us. Um, these testimonials are from g2.com, the letter G, the number two, dot com. Um, great third party uh, uh, website. Um, and the quote from Paula Wiggins in your lower right, um, that's from the Mike Roy dot net website. Mike Roy, uh, uh, M-I-C-R-O-I-X, we'll see that again here on the next slide, but dot net is uh, how do you get to their website. Um, something I want to point out, because I, I talk to customers day in and day out, and they don't, many of them aren't aware of the, the website, but um, the resource that you should be using, everyone should be using, is the community, the MIP community. Just type in community.abilla.com into your browser and you should find it. Uh, but this is an online forum for customers and this is designed to share ideas and solicit feedback from other MIP users. There's constant communications from uh, at the corporate level. Um, there's a lot of collaboration amongst our nonprofits and that's, that's a good thing. Um, uh, there are so many people that are willing to share advice um, words to the wise, things like that. So go to these websites, check out what other nonprofits are saying about us, and then give us a call. Um, that's, that's what we're here for. First thing we're going to do is really spend a lot of time listening and observing. Um, we always start off, I always start off with this one question, what prompted you to reach out? Why are you calling? What are we, what are we, why are we talking about this? What are the problems you're trying to solve? Um, what are the processes and tools that you already have in place, and how can we build off of them? Once we have all that information, then we can get someone like Mike Roy involved or other sales engineers and consultants, those other people you met in the prior screen. The really cool thing about Mike Roy specifically is that their software is going to adopt your current processes and help you optimize them. Your staff is now going to be enabled with the right tools and the right processes. With Mike Roy, you will not have to change who you are fundamentally how you operate. Um, more importantly, you're not going to lose sight of your mission uh, just to make the software work. 
All right, enough about JMT. Uh, we're going to turn our attention over to Microy. Microy has been a great partner to both JMT and all of our clients. Microy workflow modules help our clients extend the capability of their micro, uh, of their MIP software as they grow, and they're going to avoid costly conversion to a different platform. So once you start adding bits and pieces, it's very common that you might actually have to look at a, uh, a, a competitive solution with with the help of Microy, you don't have to do that. The stability and consistency of quality of the modules lets JMT recommend these solutions without any sort of hesitation. Uh, the Microy's team is responsive. Uh, they're committed to partners like JMT. Really, it just makes a, a great partnership uh, and great relationship. Cherry, she's going to walk us through the rest of the presentation. Remember, jot down questions in the chat room, and we'll have an opportunity to address them at the end of the presentation. All right, Cherry, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and transition this over to you. Great. Well, thank you so much, Dan. I'll go ahead and let me just get my screen ready here. Okay. Can everyone see my screen? Uh, Dan, can you confirm that for me? Looks great. We're on the uh, workflow. Yeah, we're we're in the heart. Perfect. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Dan, again. Um, hi, everyone. This is Cherry with Mike Roy, and we're so glad that you guys are able to join us today. We're going to be talking about the Mike Roy timesheet module. Just a quick overview of the module. Uh, this module will allow each employee to record their timesheet data electronically, and it automatically routes through an approval, uh, multi-level approval process. Upon final approval, Microy will adjust the employee's payroll distribution code to match their timesheet allocated hours, and it's going to generate a regular timesheet within MIP um, payroll module. So the first thing we would like to start talking about before we get into the actual application, I'm going to jump out over to our website. And I wanted to sort of talk, first of all, of uh, different ways that you can capture employees' time. So let me go ahead and bring that up for you guys um, so you can kind of see all the different methods here. And I'm hoping this is coming across clear to everyone here. So here's a couple ways, you know, and you can have a combination here. Just um, we do have biometric time clocks and web time clocks. So if you need hourly employees, you know, to be able to clock in and out, you know, track in and out um, times for hourly employees, of course, we have those two options for you. Um, if you're concerned about budget buddy punching, uh, we you know definitely recommend the the biometric, the eye face. And with this this time clock here, you can enroll, as you could see here, staff using any of these methods. So if, again, if you're concerned about buddy punching, you can enroll them using a facial or a fingerprint. We also have an RFID card um, that you can roll them with and a key, a key tap there, okay, a tag. Uh, the web time clock um, uh, also has the ability um, to have a GPS um, tracking if the location tracking is um, not turned on on the phone browser, you can also get that. But again, for hourly employees, if you wanted to track time, um, you could, use these two methods here. Um, it also will give them the ability to punch in using a distribution code. So we'll talk about that when we get into the actual, um, in, into the software, okay? The other two methods here, if you're seeing here, electronic timesheets, um, uh, especially if, if time clocks are not required, you could have employees using the electronic timesheets where they can um, charge different, um, charge a time to different funding sources simply by just selecting a distribution code per entry. So I'll sort of demonstrate that for you as well. We also have the ability uh, where the system can allow for group timesheet creation where one individual can enter timesheet uh, data for multiple employees. Okay, so again, you can use one or a combination of these methods here. Now, the other big question is, you know, um, how will employees have access to the system? Okay, I, I want to first, before we actually jump into the software, talk about two different methods. One being uh, simply using 
a full desktop version, which we strongly recommend more for payroll admin, the person who's going to be finalizing the timesheets in the system and transferring it over to MIP. Um, would require a full desktop, um, and that would be based on concurrent licenses, and which is separate from MIP. So, just wanted to touch on, uh, the, you know, that option. The second option is through what we call a web companion, and let me go ahead and bring that up. I think I have that open here. This is where um, it's called a web companion, where employees can have access to a sort of an online portal here. I wanted to mention it because it is affordable and it will give your staff easy access to Microid. This option is based on named users. So let me go ahead and open up the uh, web companion so I can kind of show you some of the options staff will have out here. So each individual will have their user credentials to log in. And you'll notice that they will have this timesheet drop down here. And also what you'll notice that there's some user options here, along with some, you know, time clock options. More importantly, they also have some approver options out here here. So not only can staff come in here to do, you know, maybe create a timesheet, request leave, uh, we'll kind of go through these functions here. Approvers can jump on here to approve leave or approve timesheets as well with the exception of, of course, that last um, final approver that would have to be in the desktop. So the first thing, you know, that employees uh, will have access to, you know, again, if they have access to this cloud companion here, is that they'll be able to view their employee information. Again, this is a read-only screen. Um, it's pulling it directly from MIP. So they can come in here and view this. Um, if any updates need to be made to this, they could send a quick email to payroll and ask, uh, can you please update my address? Um, and once that gets updated in MIP, it will be reflected here for them in real time. Some other things employees will have access to is their employee pay stub, okay? So they could come in here, print out either their current pay stub, view it. Um, they'll also be able to notice here, if you're tracking leave in MIP, they'll be able to see their leave information as well and print this out if needed, okay? Now, another thing, if, if you have a formal leave request process, they can also come in here and request leave. We'll talk about the workflow in a moment. So once an employee jumps on here to you know, uh, request leave, this leave request can go to their immediate supervisor for approval. So an example is I can come in here, maybe I wanna go ahead and request um, tomorrow off. And here is the leave codes that we'll be pulling directly from MIP. And you could stop it if they don't have any leave or, or, or keep it flexible and have the supervisor be the one to go ahead and approve that leave request. You know, if I wanted to take a half a day or maybe a full day, I'll put in the number of hours per day. Um, I could put in some notes here and now I could just submit this off and this leave request would go to my immediate supervisor um, for approval. Once it's been approved, um, once I submit my timesheet, if this uh, request was approved, it will get inserted on inserted onto my timesheet automatically, and that's what's going to get routed for approval. Okay. So just wanted to show you these, these functions out here that's um, that is available for you know your approvers, your, your requesters. Okay. Some other options, you know, of course, you've got your um, approving leaves out here. I just want to kind of show you some of the options available for approvers out here. Okay. So again, this is what we call the micro cloud companion, and it is based on the uh, named users. Let's jump back into the application now, the desktop version, and kind of show you um, some other options here. We talked about employees filling out timesheets maybe salary employees, or maybe if you don't need a biometric time clock, this is how you want staff to come in here and be able to fill out a timesheet. So let me give an example of that. So again, each employee will have their own name and password to log in. If I go to my timesheet, I am going to be able to see all my timesheets here. If I've been using the system for a while, I'll have more timesheets filled out here. Um, and this, you know, if I wanted to create a brand new timesheet, I would just click on new, and it will just prompt me to the next timesheet uh, or pay date, I need to fill out the timesheet. But just for time purposes, I went ahead and 
created this timesheet here uh, just to kind of show you how you could come in here and drop in again, depending on your process. Here's where they can come in here and notice my court is pulling the pay type from MIP. They have their pay codes here. And here is their distribution codes or charge codes that could, they, and again, this is pulling directly from MIP based on your payroll. And here is where I am able to come in here and drop in the number of hours I've worked in each, you know, uh, cost center here or distribution code. So in this example, on Friday, I worked two hours in daycare. I worked one hour in food services. So again, I could click the plus button, create a new line. But the idea here is uh, being able to just kind of come in here and put in the number of hours of work per day. Okay. Now, if you have any kind of expense reimbursements, that you need to submit and get reimbursed on the payroll side, there is the ability for you to come in here and add that along with any attachments, receipts that you need to submit uh, for approval, okay? So that option is here. But this is again, a, just a, an example of what a uh, um, timesheet would look like. They will also have the ability to fill this out on the web that we saw earlier. There's another format that you can um, set up if you prefer to have this uh, timesheet um, shown in a different way, instead of dropping in the number of hours, perhaps you wanna configure it where they're gonna tell you what time I came in. Maybe I came in at eight o'clock and I clocked, you know, I worked until you know, uh, 10 o'clock. So a time in and a time out, and then the system will automatically calculate the, the hours for you. So again, you can, you know, you can have two different types of um, timesheets, one hours and one with the time in and time out, okay? So that's, um, and again, this timesheet, once I've filled it out, I'm gonna go ahead and submit it off for approval. And that brings me to the next part of the demonstration, which we'll talk a little bit about um, workflows, okay? So my core, this is sort of the heart of the software. This is where you would be able to come in here and set up approval processes for these timesheets, okay? Now, a workflow could represent one of your supervisors, right? I have it based on a department here, but you can customize these workflows to match your, you know, whatever category you'd like, you know? Um, and you would assign the employees that belong to this workflow or this manager. And more importantly, how do I want the timesheets routed for approval? Let me see if I have a, another. So again, here is an example of how I could set up my approval process for this particular timesheet. And each workflow you design can have a unique approval process, okay? So here again, when this employee submits their you know, timesheet, it goes to a manager, and then after the manager approves it, it then moves on to uh, the payroll or the final approver that's going to push it over to MIP, okay? Now, the other thing I wanted to mention here too is notice here for those who are, you know, clocking in and out and you want them to, you know, or they need to affirm that their hours are correct. You can, you know, have that message. Um, and when the supervisor creates the, the timesheet on behalf of the employee, the employee can go ahead and, you know, approve it. So that could, you know, uh, or have that certification on there, okay? So again, just a quick overview of the, the workflow and setting up the workflows as far as how you want those timesheets routed for approval, okay? Now, that leave request we mentioned earlier that went through the, uh, maybe my employee submitted a leave request. I wanted to show you what it's going to look like for a manager that gets that leave request and how easy it will be for them to come in here. They'll be able to see I don't have an example here, but they'll be able to see all their employee leave requests here, ready for them to review it, approve it or deny it. Before they approve or deny it, they also have access, if I jump over to this workflow leave calendar, I'll also be able to see who else is off on that day. So I can go back and decide if I want to approve it or you know, again, deny it or ask them to take another day off. Now I could see it based on just my workflow so my employees, or you could also, you know, be able to view it throughout the whole organization. 
let's see who else is off on that day so I can determine, you know, so having access to that workflow leave calendar may be helpful in, um, in being able to approve those leaves, okay? Now, a new option we have here, um, it is currently in beta uh, testing right now, is a scheduler. I just wanted to briefly mention that to you. It is, it is new. This will allow staff to do a complete um, employee schedule and you can compare the schedule um, time to actual time. So again, keep that in mind, uh, um, that should be coming out soon. Um, it will eventually get um, integrated with time clocks um, at a later date, but I just wanted to quickly mention that, okay? Now, as far as the approval process of these timesheets, okay? Um, when these timesheets go through the approval process, each manager or, or uh, director will be able to go to approve timesheets and they'll see a list of all the timesheets waiting for, for them to approve, okay? Including the payroll, uh, the last level approver. I have one here as an example, right? Notice I'm seeing a, a, a summary of this timesheet. I'm seeing total earnings, leave, total earnings, any overtime, uh, total hours, you know, mileage and amount. Um, so if I wanted to take a closer look at this timesheet as an approver, I most certainly can double click on it and review, open up the timesheet and see exactly, you know, uh, more details. And again, with an approver, some of the functions all approvers will have, they can reroute the timesheet back for additional approval. They can quickly ask a question if needed, but again, they will be able to hopefully quickly approve these timesheets. Now, one other option I wanted to show you, especially for upper management or someone who's in the approval process of these timesheets and really don't have time to log into this application or through the web, we do have an optional function uh, or feature called HTML approval. And I think I have one here I could show you where instead of, again, certain level approvals, instead of them logging into the application or through the web, they would be able to approve these timesheets directly from an email. So this is an example of what an HTML approval will see. They will be able to see the actual timesheet, all the detail here. And within the email, notice they'll have a button here to approve it, reject it, avoid it. Okay, reject just moves it back to a previous level. Um, the void, I believe puts it in a void status um, and you will have be able to, to add comments when you use these two functions here. You'll also see all the previous approvers here. And if you wanted to make modifications and you are a named user on the, the Cloud Companion, you'll have a link here to be able to click to log in to look, take a closer look at this. But I just wanted to show you um, a nice convenient way for um, and a fast way uh, to approve these timesheets uh, for certain um, approvers using this HTML, okay? So again, the, um, these timesheets are gonna go through all the approvals. When it gets up to, a, to the final approver, they're gonna be able to see all the timesheets listed out here. They can either wait until all the timesheets get to, to your level, and, or you could work through it, you know, based on maybe processing groups or again, as you're getting it. Um, there's also a nice feature here where they could click the status button and the status button will be able to tell them, notice here, certain timesheets that has not been created. So they will be able, instead of them having to go hunt down, um, you know, where these timesheets are, they'll be able to see that status and know exactly who to contact to um, get those timesheets moving, okay? So once all the timesheets are, you know, um, at the last level approver, what will happen is uh, uh, the payroll staff will be able to select all the timesheets and go ahead and click on approve. And that's what's gonna take this timesheet over to your accounting system. Actually, this was not at the last level. And it's going to transfer this over ready for accounting to log out of Mike or going to MIP 
just calculate the payroll and print the checks over in MIP. Okay, so that again is a quick overview of the, the, the timesheet uh, module. Some other functionality since we have some time here, if you're using the time clocks, um, notice there's also an in and out board where you could see, you know, as a supervisor, I could see who clocked in, who's, you know, did not. I could see an absent list here. Um, if I am working on several um, of my, you know, employees' time, maybe they're clocking in and out, I can process multiple timesheets. I can come in here and see all the punch data, right, in and out. Anything that's out of sync will show up in red for me, for me to come in here and modify. Um, so as a manager, I can come in here, see time clock, uh, you know, uh, history or entries here. I will be able to see exactly which terminal they clocked in from. If you have multiple time clocks, it will capture any changes that's made in here. And this is where the supervisor can actually create the timesheet on behalf of the employee. So being able to process multiple timesheets is another function. Tons of reports out here, just depending on what you're needing. There's also the ability where we have some alerts in the system. So if you feel like um, for a timesheet, you know, you need these timesheets moving in a timely manner or approved in a timely manner, you could set up alerts in here to say, okay, I think two days, five days is enough time, you know, depending on your, your pace cycle here. Um, that they should be submitting their timesheets, uh, you know, within a certain period of time. You could set those parameters up in the system to make certain that these timesheets are moving in a timely manner. The other thing I wanted to mention when we, we talked about the workflows, another nice thing to make certain because timesheets are so time sensitive, when you're building out your workflows, you can, I'm going to use requisitions for a moment. Let me see if I have one set up here. Notice you have an alternate approver here. So for timesheets, you can build in, you could build in a alternate approver. So that would make certain that these timesheets are, are being approved in a timely manner. So again, if a manager is out, you could have someone on backup that can go in and, uh, you know, so that it's not sitting at that level waiting for upon their return to approve it. So really great way for you to make certain um, that these time it's more of a permanent solution so someone who's built into your level that can approve the timesheets or we have something called approval substitution if I know I'm going on a plan leave or vacation I can initiate an approval substitution tell the system when I'm leaving when I'm returning and who can approve the timesheets for me okay now any rules you have related to timesheets overtime clocking in and out rules all of that can be configured in the software so the software can, can you know, um, control all of that for you, okay? Uh, so other types of reports you have, you know, uh, if you wanted to print a time clock early late punch, that's available. All of these reports in MyCore can be printed out, exported to Excel if needed, um, time clock miss punch, absent. Um, so again, even an allocation report, timesheet allocation detail report. So lots of report just depending on what you're needing, okay? So I think I pretty much touched on, gave you guys a quick overview of the modules. Do we have any questions, Dan, or anything I can answer? I'm trying to make certain I didn't miss anything. Yeah, I think there was a question that came in from Leah. Yeah. What's the relationship between the software portion of Microy, the, the actual timesheet module, and HR processes? Meaning, if uh, if a customer does have uh, the HR module from MIP, sometimes there's a relationship between uh, their EWS module and HR. Meaning, you do one thing from uh, uh, you can do something on one module, and it'll impact the other. What kind of relationship does Micro have in that regard? Well, since we only integrate uh, to the MIP payroll module, uh, and, I, and I'm assuming that the payroll module talks to the, you know, HR. Um, yep. Yeah, so that would be, or the only relationship we have is with the MIP payroll. So Leah, to answer your question, there isn't one. Whatever, uh, let's say you're making benefit plans that impact, um, that would potentially impact something in payroll. 
EWS is not going to, or sorry, uh, micro timesheet is not going to have that same relationship. So really, all you're doing is just importing the, the time and labor uh, into the payroll piece. So there's no direct relationship with HR management. It uh, looks like we asked another question here. Um, how can you set up exempt employee with standard hours? Our admins are manually, our admins manually enter out, manually enter hours. <laughs> May, uh, well, there is an option where you can have it where um, if you just wanted you know, the system, you know, to allow like sort of a group timesheet creation where you can have one employee um, or individual enter the timesheets for multiple employees, like say for salary employees, and then have those routed, that could be um, set up. But there is a way where you could set up, you know, default hours into the, the timesheet. So if you have default hours, you could use an icon below here where you could insert a shift. So you would create a shift schedule for default hours. And when you create your new timesheet, you would just, you know, click on this button here, what would insert those um, default hours to the timesheet, then now it can get um, routed for approval. Okay. Okay, and we have one more question here in the chat that came through. Um, is this smartphone friendly or better by a computer for the employee entry of time? Um, Smartphones are, are great if, if they're clocking in and out. It's more designed for the clocking in and out from the smartphone. But if you're filling out a timesheet, we highly recommend the Cloud Companion um, you to, using it on a tablet or a PC because of the screen size. Okay, and just a reminder, uh, we can answer any questions following this webinar as well. All you have to do is just contact uh, Dan or myself or anyone here at JMT or at Micro, and we would love to help. Um, Dan and Cherry, do y'all have any last comments you would like to make? Uh, I think we are, let's see, uh, offering Starbucks gift cards to anyone who wants to explore this a little bit further. So if you want to book a consultation with either Cherry or myself, um, let me see if I can maybe share this, uh, share this deck page. Cherry, could I take, yeah. uh, the screen share back over of course. so that people have a, uh, let's see. Yeah, it's going to be by the end of the day this Friday. So May 21st, uh, if you book a consultation with us by then, uh, you'll receive a, I believe it's a $10 Starbucks gift card. Yeah, there's there it is. Book a consultation with our nonprofit experts. Get that. I'm a, I'm an expert today. Ten dollars Starbucks card. Book by Tuesday. JMTConsulting.com/book. Yeah. So thank you everyone for joining us today. If you again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, we also do have the next webinar in our series coming up on June second over the inventory module. Uh, we'll be sending out those emails as well. So thank you, everyone, and have a great rest of your day. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Jerry. Thank you. Bye.